and then exactly the last one has to be finished. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alhamdulillah, he woke up. Was salam on Ala Ibadi Hilazina Staffa, my bad. Audu Billah, he mina shaitan or regime, Miss Millah, your Rahman, your Rahim. Wakana Bil Mokminina Rahima. Subhana Rabbika Rabbil Izati Amma Yasifon. والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد 
وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم The more you will know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more we will fall in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a, a principle that no one falls in love with a stranger. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us these asma ul husna. They teach us so much about Allah ta'ala. And today we want to do two more names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala put two names for His mercy, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. That means Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala's Rahma is Ghalib, it's dominant. That our Rabb is Ar-Rahman and our Rabb is Ar-Rahim. Now these two words normally we use interchangeably, but there is a difference in meaning. Both of them have the meaning of mercy. But Ar-Rahman means that being who possesses all the mercy. is the epitome of mercy, mercy incarnate. And then maybe some people might say that Allah subhanahu wa does not dispense mercy. So Allah ta'ala makes that very clear that Allah ta'ala is not just Ar-Rahman, is not just that being who's the possessor of infinite mercy, he is also Ar Rahim, he is also all merciful, he is all mercy giving. And this cannot be captured when you translate this as compassion or benevolent or even all merciful, all mercy giving. This mercy is for us. This mercy is so that we can benefit from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are here to make ourselves magnets for that mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single name of Allah, in fact, every single ayat of the Quran, every single hadith and sunnah, when we adorn our life with that, we become magnets for this mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the whole Quran, you can read it in such a way that it's speaking about the tales of His mercy, the stories of Allah's mercy. <clears throat> so these two names, Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. Ar-Rahman means that being who's the possessor of all infinite mercy. And Ar-Rahim means that being who's the dispenser of that infinite mercy. There are two separate sifat. So, for example, there might be a person who is very wealthy, has a lot of wealth. That's one attribute. But if he is not generous, doesn't spend that wealth, then what's the point of that wealth? And on the other hand, you might have a person who has a very open heart, very generous in nature. He spends a lot, but he doesn't have any money to spend. So that's also another defect. So the ideal would be that you have a wealthy person with a lot of wealth and also that person has an open heart. So Allah Ta'ala is the possessor of infinite mercies and is also the giver, the dispenser of those infinite mercies. Allah becomes happy. That's why you have two names, Rahman and Rahim. Similarly, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Mubarak rahmatullahi he has written several ways you can understand these two words. So he explains that Ar Rahman refers to that being that when you ask from it, when you ask anything from him, he will give it to you. And Ar Rahim means that being that if you don't ask him, he will become upset with you. Just like when you have a very 
compassionate teacher and or a compassionate parent they want to fulfill the needs of their children and if you don't ask them anything you don't ask them a good question they say that why aren't you asking us why aren't you engaging with us we want to help you in the same way allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is also infinitely more compassionate than our mothers than our parents than our teachers and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees us that we are running here and there trying to solve our issues and problems we have to beg before other people allah becomes upset that why aren't you asking me there is a hadith where the prophet sallallahu says that when a person doesn't ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah becomes upset that i'm here to solve your solve your problems you should have asked me so ar rahim means that being who becomes upset if you don't ask him allahu akbar subhanallah look at rahman and rahim that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you ask him you become his beloved and if you don't ask him allah says why aren't you asking me ask from me so that i can help you then there is another meaning another difference that according to arabic language ar rahman means that being whose rahmat whose mercy is very extensive yani every person is able to benefit from that mercy whether they are believers unbelievers whoever they are it's extensive mercy all can benefit from him and ar rahim means that being whose rahmat is very intensive yani whose rahmat has a lot of intensity is complete and perfect so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rahma is extensive for every person throughout the dunya there is no farak no difference between a believer and an unbeliever allah taala gives them risk allah taala gives is a Allah Taala gives blessings and bounties to every person on this earth. Ha on the day of judgment Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will give a very special mercy to the believers and that will be the intensive mercy for the believers. That's why Allah says wa kana bil mu'minina rahima that Allah with the mu'minin with the believers will be very intensive in his mercy. And because of that intense mercy of Allah the believers will be able to enter into jannah now when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts the quran the first introduction that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us is that allah taala wants us to know about his rahma and both those words are made part of the bismillah bismillah ir rahman ir rahim that i begin with allah who's a rahman and a rahim and then in another ayah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an announcement then nabbi ibadi anni ana al-ghafur ar-rahim sayyidina usman radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu he used to say that this is one of the most mercy inspiring ayat of the quran most hope inspiring ayat of the quran that a person who reads this ayah and they feel the mercy of allah because allah taala is saying to his beloved nabi alaihi salam the nabbi ibadi oh my beloved messenger tell my servants ye bhi ek andaaz hota hai it's a mohabbat it's a way of showing love that tell my servants anni ana al-ghafur ar-rahim that i am very quick to forgive i'm very forgiving and i'm very rahim very all merciful and when does a person say this when you want to give something when there is an irada a desire to give something so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that tell my servant that i am very forgiving and i am very merciful elsewhere allah taala says inna allaha bin nasi la raufur rahim that indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with all humanity all people not just believers but every single human being allah is rauf and rahim Allah is soft and compassionate and kind and generous and rahim Allah taala is full of mercy merciful so this sifat this attribute of rahma is very ajeeb 
this rahmat of allah is descending upon us all the time and you read begin to read quran after every few ayats you will see this word rahman and rahim in quran this word rahman comes about 57 times and rahim is used 114 times in the quran you begin from surah baqarah allah says allah introduces himself wa ilahukum ilahun wahid la ilaha illa huwa rahmanur rahim that there is no deity worthy of worship except him who is ar rahman and who is ar rahim then you move to the next surah surah al an'am allah says kataba ala nafsihi ar rahma that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made a rahma mandatory for himself and nothing is mandatory but it's go ya allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that allah has made a mercy lazim for himself he has prescribed mercy upon himself this is so that me and you we can get its manan we can benefit from this mercy that our rab is so merciful and this mercy of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always attached to allah taala always remember this principle that these names of allah taala these are the attributes of allah taala and these attributes of allah taala are joined with the being of allah are joined with the zat of allah they can never be separated from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what does that mean said when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may be upset with a person is in halat e jalal or angry even at that time this attribute of rahma is attached with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah is still all merciful at that time for example we see that sometimes a father he becomes he's very compassionate but when he is angry so he places his compassion on one side and now he shows his anger the son he says something the father interrupts he says that don't come in front of me leave me why because in a state of anger at that time but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mamula is completely different allah's sifat of rahma is never separated from him when allah is happy with a person allah is also rahim and when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is upset with a person he is still rahim even when allah taala is in a state of jalal or angry still that the rahma that sifat is present inside and this was the marifat a point which shaitan also understood and that's why when he refused to do sajda to sayyidina adam alayhi salatu wassalam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him that fakhruj minha fa innaka rajim that exit this assembly you are deprived you are repudiated denied he knew that allah taala is in a state of jalal at this time very angry and what greater disobedience can a person do than what he did that he refused to refused to obey the hukum of allah subhanahu wa taala but he had this marfa and at that time in that situation he turns to allah and makes dua to allah rabbi he looks upon calls allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this word rab you are my rab you are my lord you are my cherisher my nourisher my sustainer fa anzirni ila yawm yubasun then o oh my rab grant me respite until yawm al qiyama so that i can lead mankind astray this was the you know he used that opportunity to make a very ajeeb dua right and that's why he was deprived then allah taala accepted that dua what is fascinating about this story is that shaitan also understood he knew that at this time allah subhanahu wa taala sifat of rahma is also present and if i call upon allah subhanahu wa taala using this word rab allah will accept my dua and allah did accept that dua allah said fa innaka minal munzari that go we have given you an excuse a respite until qiyama so allah subhanahu wa taala that being who is so merciful 
in a situation when he is very angry. Ain halat jalal, he is rahim and kareem. Imagine when Allah becomes happy, how much rahmah will there be for a person? Subhanallah. So we are the servants of Ar Rahman and Ar Rahim. If we worship Allah Ta'ala, if we please Allah Ta'ala, then Allah's Rahmah will descend upon us like rain. We will be drowning and drenching in the mercies of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And throughout our deen, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has given us certain actions through which we can become magnets of this mercy. For example, Quran is a magnet which attracts this mercy of Allah, pulls this mercy from Allah. Allah says in Quran, وَإِذَا قُرِيَ الْقُرْآنِ فَاسْتَمِعُوا لَهُ وَأَنْسِتُوا لَعَلَّكُمْ تُرْحَمُونَ That when Quran is recited, you should become silent and you should listen to it attentively so that you will get rahmat from Allah SWT. So this is the month of Quran. This is the month of Rahman. We can become magnets and receive this Rahmah in our life. There are many such actions that a person can do. For example, if a person does zikr of Allah, they remember Allah Spantara. So there are some people who gather together from different places and they sit with the intention of remembering Allah Ta'ala then Allah Ta'ala showers their entire gathering with the mercy, with his rahmah. This is a sahih sound hadith mentioned in sahih Muslim, that Allah envelops them with sakina and rahmah. And this happens for those people who have gathered from different places in order to remember Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala. So SubhanAllah, Allah Subhanahu Ta'ala becomes happy when a person remembers him and Allah Ta'ala showers that person with his rahmah. There is a hadith where Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he narrates that the Prophet Sallallahu said that when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala had created all the creation, all the makhlukat, and Allah Ta'ala had decided the decree, the taqdeer of every person and was written down in the kitab which was on the arsh of Allah Ta'ala. And there Allah Ta'ala also wrote down one sentence, one statement. And this is a very important statement. Inna rahmati taghlibu ghazabi. That my mercy, it outstrips my anger. And subhanallah, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala's mercy is ghalib, it's dominant. That's why Allah uses two of his names at the beginning of the Quran. Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Because his mercy, it outstrips his anger. Hazrat Salman, he says that we, when we read the Torah, and it's written that when Allah Ta'ala created the skies and, the, and, the, and, and heavens and the earth, and after creating all the makhlukat, the creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had 100 portions of his mercy and distributed only one portion of that mercy among the creation, among the makhluk. And all the people, all the animals, all the birds, every and any type of makhluk, wherever you see any compassion within them, any mercy within them, any rahmat within them, it's, uh, it's because of the effect of that one portion of Allah's mercy. Yani a father and a mother, they love their children because of that one portion, a fraction of a fraction of that mercy. So subhanAllah. When a person, you, we live with other people and we have love for other people, we have for compassion for other people and in the sharia this is ibadah so just to for us to understand allah's mercy one love that is the most kavi out of all these loves is the love of a mother and every makhluk has this ni'mah the mother they love their children whether they're insan animal birds any creation you must have seen many times there's a chicken roaming around a chick 
with their children and when she sees a cat from a distance she takes out her wings in front of her chick to fight the cat she knows she cannot win the fight but she also knows that she cannot see the cat eat her chick she knows that but still she decides i am willing to die pehle mujhse muqabla karo and then you can touch my children likewise there is a bird a sparrow or a baby bird there is a nest in a room and if she goes out to get food for her child and someone closes the door or she keeps flying here and there the water is in her beak she is thirsty but she doesn't drink it herself she saves it for her child this love for a mother is very ajeeb once amma aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala ana someone came to her to ask for something to eat and she had two children so maisha radhiyallahu ta'ala ana she gave her three dates so mother she took one date and gave it to one of her child second date gave it to the second child and she didn't eat her own date she was waiting and when the children ate theirs she split the date into two halves and gave them each half she didn't eat herself and when the prophet sir salam came amma aisha radhiyallahu ta'ala ana she told him and the prophet sir salam explained that a mother has so much love for her child <clears throat> so imagine how much allah will have mohabbat for a child now every woman they also want to become a mother and sometimes you can have all the wealth all the nimate but when a woman she she it's a it's a deep desire that she wants to become a mother and she prays namaz in namaz she makes dua she prays tahajjud quran does tawaf umrah wherever she goes she is asking allah taala to bless her with aulad with children the mother she knows it will be very it will be a lot of struggle still she wants the baby and then when you know she knows that once she will conceive she will be sick she will be sick for nine, nine months and that she will have morning sickness and she won't like the food she won't like the smell of the meat she keep throwing up she knows all of that that the birth is going to be very painful a matter of life and death but she is ready to bear this pain why because she wants children so badly and she also knows that i'll have to become a 24 hour 24 hour khadima a servant after i become a mother and i have to stay up all night because of my child she is willing to compromise all of this for the sake of her child she sacrifices her physical needs as well she is going to different people asking requesting them to make duas and when initially she got married she used to go out with her husband and she would shop for herself with her husband now when she goes out with her husband she is busy buying stuff for her child she is getting the clothes the feeder the shoes now it's all about the child she forgets her sleep she forgets her own eating if the child is sick and she has to stay up all night she does it when child sleeps all night and she is about to drop to sleep drop and then the child wakes up immediately and she again sacrifices her sleep so the mother allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made her in such a way that it's a model of muhabba a model of mercy and love for us the child becomes the most important person in her life her relationships change before marriage she loved her sister a lot now she is thinking about her child only and she is cooking in the kitchen on the watch you know on the watch out for the lightest sound of her child so this is what happens right the child gets sick she is fickle she has concern about her child when the child pulls her hair she thinks it is love when the child slaps her face she thinks it is love so how much mohabbat does the mother have for her child hmm if the same child let's say he grows up and he comes you know if he goes away and uh, after a long time he comes back he knocks on the door of his mother she doesn't hesitate in opening the door she doesn't wait she opens the door 
And then let's say the child is still a bit strict. He's still a bit upset with his mother. He doesn't meet his mother properly. He goes back to his room. So the mother, she has mohabba. She wakes up her daughter that please take out food for him. And uh, I cannot stand his hunger. So the mother, she's still insisting. And if finally the son comes out and he apologizes, now what will she do? She was already waiting to forgive him. So if the mother, when the son comes to her, he holds her feet, he says, Mom, I'm sorry, please forgive me. So she immediately says that, Beta, I forgive you. So imagine if a mother, when she is so angry, when the son starts crying, she immediately melts. She forgives him. Now all of this, this is a preface to understand something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to give a namuna, a model of his love in this world. And that's why Allah ta'ala created the mother. That, oh my insan, look how a mother sacrifices, forgives her children, hides his fault. Oh my servants, if you want to gauge my rahma and love, then know that I've distributed one part out of hundred parts in this world. And that mother who has so much mohabba for her child, that's a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of that one part. And the 99 parts of the rahmat are with me and I will deal with you with that hundred, all those complete hundred parts. Subhanallah. The love that we see and experience and live by in this world it's just a fraction of a fraction of Allah's rahmah. All of us, we partake, all the mothers, they partake from that one part. And just like a mother, she waits for a lost son. Allah says, I wait even more, much more for my sinning servant to come back to my door to repent and to return back to me. If you ask a mother, can you give taklif or any parishani, any pain to your child? She says, no, no way. <laughs> She cannot stand anyone else giving any pain to her child. Why would she want to give the pain herself? Exactly in the same way, Allah is much more merciful than a mother. 70 times more, in fact, much more than 70 times. So Allah Ta'ala cannot stand his servant getting pain in this world. How can Allah Ta'ala with his 99 parts, you know, in the dunya, we can't even see our enemy burn in fire. And we are just partaking from that fraction of Allah's rahmah. And still we don't like to see an enemy of us burn in fire. How can Allah Ta'ala ar-Rahman and ar-Rahim with his 99 parts would like to, would want to send someone to the fire? No. Allah Ta'ala has created excuses in our deen to forgive us. For example, number one, if a person only intends to do a good deed, then Allah Ta'ala orders the angels to write that good deed. He only has made an intention, no action at this point. But a good deed is written because of his intention. And on the other hand, if one intends to do a bad deed, Allah Ta'ala orders the angels to wait until the bad deed is actually done. And then even when the bad deed is done, Allah Ta'ala tells the angels to wait maybe this person might make Toba or do a good deed. And if this person does a good deed, so one good deed is multiplied 10 times. So you do one good deed, you get 10 times the reward of that good deed. So what happens is, subhanallah, that you do a sin. Allah does not allow the angels to write it immediately in your book of deeds. But you, if you can follow it up with a good deed, now, <clears throat> your good deeds are multiplied 10 times. <laughs> Subhanallah. Right? You can continue to do five bad deeds. And then after that, you do one good deed. And what's written in your name amal, in your book of deeds, is that this person has done five good deeds. Hmm? Because 10, five will offset the five misdeeds. And what is remaining is five good deeds. Subhanallah. Right? This is Allah Subhanallah's mercy. Innal hasanat sayyat. Allah has made a golden principle that your good deeds will do away, will wipe away your misdeeds. It's as if that person never sinned. He did five sins. 
but after that did one good deed and what's written in his name amal it's written that he did five good deeds <laughs> subhanallah so that's why there is a hadith you could say allah says that wa in taqarraba ilayya that when a person a servant comes towards me a hand span i go to him an arm's length and when he comes to me an arm's length i go towards him walking and when he comes to me walking wa in atani yamshi ataituhu harwala then i go towards him running towards fleeing so subhanallah whatever we do allah taala's mercy will come to that person much more in a more intense way now here a question comes up in our mind if someone asks that why are there these worries in this world if allah is so merciful is ar rahman ar rahim actually these worries also come because of allah taala's merciful nature this is a very important point for us to understand because allah taala wishes to forgive our sins for example there is a husband let's say in one room and the wife she is in the another room and the child starts crying so the father he asks is there someone with the child and he's informed that yes the mother is with the child so the father says what kind of a mother why is the child crying in her presence and then she says that no no i'm the one making him cry because he is dirty and i need to clean him change him change his diaper this crying of the child is not because of sternness or rigidness or hardness but out of the love of the mother she cannot stand that her child smells that his clothes are dirty she cleans him and then hugs him exactly in the same way when a servant they sin in this dunya they make their heart and najis and impure in this dunya their hearts become black a black spot comes on their heart now allah taala is pure allah taala loves pure servants loves purity allah wishes to clean his servant purify his servant and hence allah taala sends some worry or difficulty his way so that this will purify him clean him and this will purify him so much so much as much as when he was when he was given birth by his mother subhanallah the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that no fatigue nor any disease nor sorrow nor sadness nor hurt nor distress comes upon a muslim even if it were a prick he receives from a thorn except that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes some of his sin for that the sound of these bukhari sharif why because in allah bin nasi la rauf ar rahim allah's rahmat is immense in rahmat allah qareeb min al muhsini allah's mercy allah is there it's always there and it's qareeb min al muhsini and especially for those who excel in good in doing good deeds they can then enjoy and bask in that in this mercy it's only that we have stopped being muhsini the mountain of tur is there there are no musa and we can also if we can become amongst the muhsinin then inna rahmatullahi qareeb min al muhsinin the rahmat of allah is qareeb to the muhsinin allah taala to even promises maghfirah for the kuffar for the unbelievers if they can turn back to allah allah can wipe away all their sins this would be maybe another now if you look in if we there is a hadith where once the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was going on some safar journey and he saw that there was a woman who was making some roti and she had her young son with him and the son would try to go near the fire and she would stop him and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he turned towards the sahaba and asked that would this mother would she allow her son to go in near that fire and they said the never because the mother she has so much love and then the prophet still master would this mother 
ever place her son inside that fire. And the Sahaba Ikram said that, Ya Rasulullah, she would never allow such a thing. She would never do such a thing. And then at that time, the Prophet said, very famous hadith, Allahu arhamu bi'ibadihi min hadihi biwaladiha. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has more muhabba, is more merciful. Arhamu is more merciful with his servants than this mother she is towards her child. So if a mother, she does not want this, then Allah Ta'ala also does not want this. And we understand then that because of our own misdeeds, our own ghafla, our own sins, we earn this, we earn the consequence. Maharal, whenever a person turns to Allah and they seek Allah's mercy and they make toba, then this door of toba is always open. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his rahmah then changes the bad deeds into good deeds. This is Quran testifying that there are some servants who make such a true toba that they receive such an intense rahmat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah does not simply forgive their sins but rather Allah transforms, converts their misdeeds into good deeds. And on the day of Qiyama, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will raise such people up. And other people will look at them and say, this is such a big wali and a friend of Allah, that he has never ever sinned. And halaki, he did a lot of sins in this dunya. But because of that true toba, Allah ta'ala changed all of his sins into good deeds. So in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes an announcement, وَرَحْمَتِي وَسِيَتْ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ That my rahmah, it extends over every single thing. Now there is a hadith here that the Prophet ﷺ, he went on a journey and uh, they had to, they set up a camp by the river. The Prophet was with the Sahaba Ikram, they prayed Asr. After Asr Sarah, the Prophet he made dua for the maghfirah of his entire ummah and they had set up a camp by the river. After he had made dua for the maghfirah of his entire ummah, Allah subhanahu wa sent a small bird and that small bird took a few grains of sand in its beak and then it went over to the water and it dropped those grains of sand inside the water. Then the bird went and again picked up a few sand, picked up a few grains, dropped it again in the water. And it did this a few times. And then Nabi Kareem Wasallam, he saw that angel Jibreel al-Islam, he also came down. So he asked him, Jibreel al-Islam that what was going on here? And the angel he replied that, yeah, O oh, beloved messenger of Allah Wasallam. Allah subhanahu wa has sent this bird to show you what his mercy and his rahmat is like. That you just made dua for the forgiveness of your whole ummah. And Allah ta'ala has sent this bird to show you that the sins of your ummah in the face of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are just like these small specks of sand in the face of his running, flowing, jari water, jari river. So just like when this bird drops that sand in the running, flowing river, the river takes it away. So just like that, the sins of your entire ummah, if they can present it to the mercy of Allah, Allah's mercy can wipe away, wash away all those sins. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending Jibra'il alayhi salam to tell Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam who told us what the rahmat of Allah subhanahu wa is. This is our Allah. Huh? This is introduction to Allah Ta'ala. Hmm? This is our deen 101. This is the beauty of our deen. This is the beauty of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the rahmat of Allah Ta'ala. This is why people over the centuries would die for this deen. <laughs> this is why they would die for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why they would give their whole life for such an Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, lest a person thinks 
then maybe this rahma is only for those people who are very pious and very righteous so there is one ayat in the quran which according to sayyidina ali radhiyallahu ta'ala an he felt that this he felt a very deep hope and yearning for the mercy of allah from this ayat of the quran he said this is one of the most hope inspiring ayats for him it's a beautiful ayat qul surah zumar qul ya ibadiyal ladhina asrafu ala anfusihim it's beautiful because here allah taala is addressing a particular group of people and whenever you have this word ya in the quran it is khitab allah is addressing a group of people ya and who are these people allazina asrafu ala anfusihim those who did wrong on their own selves those who oppressed their own selves literally those who did israf on their own selves who did zulm on their own selves by committing sin so this ayat is an address to the sinful believers it is not ya ayyuhalladhina muttaqin or alladhina amanu or this is asrafu ala anfusihim and here this is the first sign of allah's mercy is that how does he address them ya ibadi that means oh my ibad e mere bando oh my servants that means that those who oppress their own nafs i still call them as my ibad i think still think of you as my people you have not yet been taken out of my servanthood of my bandagi this is what it means in quran ya ibadi o oh my servants and slaves who have wronged and oppressed and bruised yourself in in sin still you are mine this is called ya nisbat ibadi allah is giving nisbat to himself that these are my ibad and then what does allah taala tell us la taknatu mir rahmatillah that do not ever despair of the mercy of allah subhanahu taala despite your level best sin sin after sin you are still my ibad do not despair do not ever think that you are beyond the mercy of allah and then allah taala continues inna allaha yaghfiru az-dhunuba jamia allah will shower his mercy upon you by forgiving all your sins jamia completely all sins in entirety innahu huwal ghafurur rahim again rahim comes here and indeed allah taala do you not know that he is al ghafur he is al rahim he is all forgiving and he is all merciful one so sayyidina ali radhiyallahu taala no he used to recite and reflect upon this aya and used to take hope from the mercy of of allah subhanahu taala from this aya Hazrat Abu Amama radiyallahu ta'ala anhu he narrates a hadith from the prophet sallam said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has appointed one angel for those people who use arhamur rahimin as part of their duas whenever a person calls upon Allah ta'ala using this arhamur rahimin arhamur rahimin means that being who's the most merciful of all the merciful ones this is this only befits the shan of allah taala the majesty of allah so there is one angel who has been appointed for those who say arhamur rahimin and then any person when they say arhamur rahimin three times so that angel he gives a khushkhabri a glad tidings to that person and he says to that person that that being who's arhamur rahimin is now attentive towards you with his mercy ask whatever you want to ask allahu akbar imagine when we turn to allah taala and we make dua to allah taala using arhamur rahimin we see we say this three times Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala has decreed has appointed sinless angels 
that they will be appointed when we recite Arhamur Rahimin in our du'as and then they give tasalli and consolation to us that go Allah Ta'ala is attentive towards you Allah has become attentive towards you ask whatever you want to ask Allah will accept your du'a Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala no, also narrates a similar incident that Nabi Salatu Islam was, was passing by uh, some person who was saying Arhamur Rahimin as part of his du'a. And the Prophet Sallallahu then said to him, gave him hausla and, and, and uh, said to him, give him yakin that Sal, keep on asking. Faqa the nazar Allahu ilaik. Indeed, Allah Ta'ala's nazar, is gaze is attentive towards you at this point. So you say Arhamur Rahimin in your du'a three times, you will get the attention of Allah. Allah's gaze of mercy and love will be attentive at that time. Ask whatever you want to ask. And this is precisely the reason why the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam, in their du'as, they would use this phrase Arhamur Rahimin. Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, in his du'a, Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salam, Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam, and Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salam, all of them, their du'as narrated in the Quran. And a very important part of their du'a is Arhamur Rahimi. Thousand years ago, these du'as were given to us, to the Ummah of the Prophet Sallallahu Why? Because these are makbul du'as. These are du'as where Allah Ta'ala is teaching us in the Quran. Allah teaching us the way to make du'a. And the way to make du'a is to use Arhamur Rahimin in our du'a, that du'as will be accepted. They will get the attention from Allah. So for example, Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam, now if any person is sick, there is some sickness or disease. So Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam's du'a is testifying that if you make this du'a, you will get health. And what is that du'a? Anni masani adhurru wa anta arhamur rahimi. That I have been touched with this difficulty, with this sickness, and Allah, you are Arhamur Rahimin. You are the most merciful of all the merciful ones. So people who have health issues, they should take example, they should use this dua. And we have the example of Sayyidina Ayyub alayhi salatu wasalam. Then if someone wants protection from accidents, they want to preserve, protect their life, Things happen in the world. So for that, we have a very special dua that was mentioned by Sayyidina Yaqub alayhi salatu wasalam that he made to Allah Ta'ala. And this dua he made when he was sending his children. And he said that I gave all of you in the hifazat of Allah Ta'ala. Fallahu khayrun hafiza wa huwa arhamur rahimi. Then Allah Ta'ala is the best of protectors the same phrase that Allah is the most merciful of all the merciful ones. And whoever makes this dua, Allah Ta'ala will preserve, protect that person from accidents. Then a third dua is that sometimes it happens that you have a brother who is a bit distant from deen, who is a bit far away from deen. Maybe that person, your brother, he is ghafil or he is heedless, neglectful, forgetful. So now what should we do in such a state? So in Quran, through Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam, Allah Ta'ala, is, Allah Ta'ala is teaching us another dua. So Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, he made dua, Rabbi ghafilli wali akhi. Oh Allah, forgive me and my brother. Rabbi ghafilli wali akhi wa adkhilna fi rahmatik. And Allah enable us to enter into your mercy. Wa anta arhamur rahimi. And you are the most merciful of all the merciful ones. So for those of us who have siblings who are distant from deen, we can use the dua of Sayyidina Musa wasalam, taught by Allah Ta'ala in the Quran. And then finally, we have a dua that Sayyidina Yusuf wasalam, made. And when he became pleased with his family, with his family members, he wanted to give them a gift. In that gift, he made a dua for them. What was the 
what was that dua? Yaghfirullahu lakum. Then may Allah Ta'ala forgive all of you. Wa huwa arhamur rahimin. And he is the most merciful of all the merciful ones. So we should also try to use these du'as and make arhamur rahimin as a part of our du'a so that we can also receive this mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now we'll just end <clears throat> we'll just end with one of the things that we have heard from our from our own teachers that that person who spends their entire life asking Allah for his mercy, they spend their entire life yearning and wishing and striving to be the friend of Allah, to make themselves pleasing to Allah. They slip, they fall, but they pick themselves up again. They immediately make istighfar, tawbah, turn back to Allah. They turn back to Allah again, even if they sin again. Again, they pick themselves up and turn back to Him. Yani, never do they sin except that they follow it with tawbah. Never do they fall except that they raise themselves up again. Never are they disconnected other than they become reconnected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Never do they lo lose themselves in the passion for this dunya, except that once again they try to ignite their hearts with the passion for Allah. In all of their lives, they're trying to become magnets of that mercy. They're trying, not necessarily achieving, maybe not necessarily succeeding, not necessarily attaining, but they spend their entire life wanting to please Allah desiring to please Allah, irada to please Allah, then it is beyond the mercy of Allah. It is beyond the mercy of Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. It is beyond the mercy of Ar-Hamur Rahimin that he will make such a person stand among his enemies on the day of judgment. No. Allah, he would view that person who always wanted to be his friend, who yearned to be his friend, and truly, sincerely was trying to be his friend, Allah, he will consider him to be his friend on the day of judgment. Imam Shafi Rahmatullah, he said, I love the people of righteousness. I love the people who have salah, who are true and pious. Even, I'm not one of them, but I have hope that Allah, Ta that simply my desire to be like them, my love for them, my wish to be amongst them, that because of, this Allah, because of this wish, Allah will also raise me on that day of judgment amongst the Salihin. So this month of Ramadan, this is the month to come back to Ar-Rahman. This is the month to come back to Ar-Rahim. This is the month that we have to win over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just like a child comes to ask his mother for forgiveness for something. He bursts into tears. <laughs> He kisses her hand, grabs her feet, and at last the mother, she relents. She wipes her son's tears with her own dupatta. Just like that, in this month, when a believing servant comes to his Rabb, the Ya Allah, it is the month of Ramadan. Allah, it is the month of Ar-Rahman. Allah, you are Ar-Rahman. You are Ar-Rahim. Allah, I have no amal. I have no taqwa. I have no ikhlas. I have no attributes. I'm the least of all the Muslims. But Ya Allah, you are Ar-Rahman and Ar-Rahim. I am presenting myself before you. I also want to win you back. Oh Allah, Ya Allah, forgive me also. Make me yours. Allah, I'm also a mu'min. I'm also from the Ummah of the Prophet Wasallam. I'm also one who believes in the Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah, I also am keeping my fasts. I'm also praying that Allah, your rahmah, I ask from your rahmah that Allah forgive my sins also. So we make dua to Allah Ta'ala that may Allah Ta'ala forgive all of our sins. We make dua that Ya Allah, shower encompass us, all of us with your mercy, with your rahmah, 
Allah include our names also in this month among the Ibadu Salihin, the Muhibbin, the Muqarrabin, and the Makbulin. May Allah Ta'ala accept our du'as. May Allah Ta'ala grant all of us the tawfiq to act on what was said. Wa akhiru da'wana an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. We'll end with a short dua, inshallah. سبحان ربي لا الوهاب اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربي اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين ربي اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين ربي اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا أرحم الراحمين يا رب كريم يا الله يا رب كريم we have gathered here tonight Allah Allah we ask you to forgive us for all of our sins يا رب كريم يا الله we make توبة for all of our sins and يا رب كريم يا الله we're seeking out your رحمة tonight Allah you are ar Rahman and you are ar Rahim you are al Karim يا رب كريم يا الله we ask you out of your رحمة Ya Rabbi Kareem, forgive, forgive us for all the sins that we remember, for all the sins that we have forgotten. Ya Rabbi Kareem, include our names amongst the Ibadu Salihin, amongst the Muqarrabin, amongst the Muhibbin, amongst the Maqbulin. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, it befits your shan to forgive us, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah. We have read in the Hadith of Barakah that there was a person from Bani Israel who had committed hundred murders. And Allah, he left with the intention of making Tawbah. Allah, he hadn't even entered the city. And Allah, he died on the journey. But Ya Rabbi Kareem, we also forgave him. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we have entered into this month of Ramadan. Ya Allah, to this barakah of this month. Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Allah, to forgive all of us, Ya Allah. Ya Allah, we have entered in the first 10 days of Ramadan. This is the Ashra of Rahmah. Allah, we ask you to shower us with your immense and incredible Rahmah. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we ask you, Ya Allah, to feel Rahmah, to wipe away all the sins, to wipe away all the effects of sins, to Ya Allah, stay us, to make us stay away from all the sins. Allah, grant us the repugnance of sins in our heart, grant us a dislike and a distaste for sin. Ya Rabbi Kareem, adorn for us the naked, the, naked, the good deeds, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, grant us a love for good deeds. Grant us Allah for the Qur'an, Allah for the Sunnah of Nabi alayhi salam, Allah for Ibadah. Allah accept us, Ya Allah, on this path of Ita'at and Ibadat. Enable us, Allah, to follow in the footsteps of the Nabiyeen, the Siddiqeen, the Shuhada, the Salihin. Ya Rabbi Kareem, grant us Kamil Iman in this month of Ramadan. Allah, make us people of Kamil Yaqeen. Make us people of who have Sharia Sadr about the Deen. Allah, grant us conviction and certainty in our heart. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we ask you, in this month, Ya Allah, that you shower your special gaze of muhabba upon our hearts so that we can also feel your qurb and closeness. We can also feel your nearness and intimacy. We can also feel your proximity and qurb. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we also want to feel that closeness. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we ask you out of your rahmah in this month of rahmah, in this ashra of rahmah, that Ya Allah, include our names amongst the muqarrabeen. Ya Rabbi Kareem, enlist our names among those people who are true with you, 
Ya Allah, those people who are pleasing in your eyes. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask you for your liqa in this month. We ask you for your rada, rida in this month. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask you for your muhabba, your ma'rifa, your ta'alluq, your ta'aruf, for your mushahida. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask for ihsan in this month. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we ask you for a special mercy. Allah, we don't have any actions, amal that we can present to you. But Allah, Allahumma maghfiratuka awsa'u min dhunubi wa rahmatuka arja indi min amali. Allah, your maghfirah is more than all my sins. Allah, your oceans, Ya Allah. Allah, the ocean of your maghfirah is much, much more than all of our sins. Ya Rabbi Kareem, erase all of our sins, Ya Allah. And Allah, I have more hope, Ya Allah. We have more hope in your mercy than our own, any of our actions. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, we ask out of your rahmah, Ya Rabbi Kareem, to enlist our names amongst the muttaqeen. Grant and decree for us a life of taqwa, a life of according to the Quran, sunnah and sharia. Ya Rabbi Kareem, decree us a life that is, decree us for us a life that we can, a life that is pleasing in your sight, Ya Allah. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, accept these du'as from all of us tonight. Ya Rabbi Kareem, whatever pious intentions any one of us have in our hearts, Allah, we ask you to accept those intentions, those desires, those irada, those niyat. Ya Rabbi Kareem, whatever du'as we should have asked you, we weren't able to ask you. Ya Rabbi Kareem, we ask you to grant us those du'as also according to your own shan, according to your own karam and generosity. Ya Rabbi Kareem, Ya Allah, Accept these du'as from all of us tonight. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta sami'u al-alim. Atub alayna inna ka anta tawabu rahim Wa sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi khayra khalkihi muhammadi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Mirahmatika ya arhamar rahimin.